The Apache RTR 164V shakes up the 150 segment in India, a bit more in the displacement game, providing 16.2 bhp of power at 8000 rpm and a respectful amount of torque as well to give this motorcycle low end grunt. And as I've previously complained about the hollow feeling on commuter bikes in the low and mid range, that has been improved in this motorcycle. So is it the most performance oriented 150cc in India? Guess we'll find out on our road test. The specs, however, look really impressive. 270mm single petal disc up front with a 130mm drum brake at the rear, but there's still no ABS. Engine is 160cc, but it's four valves per cylinder. It's a new design for them. They've used it on the 200cc engine, and I really like that. Yet, this one is still a carbureted version and with a five-speed gearbox. So FI and a six-speed box have been omitted to save some cost. The motorcycle gets 12 liters of fuel tank capacity and a mileage of about 40 to 45 kilometers per liter. One major disappointment was the tires. 110 section at the rear, that clearly makes it wobbly and unsafe. But as we test out everything on the road, let's just do that and see what I feel. Starting up for the 0 to 60. Starting up on the Apache 164V, um, feels just like any other commuter bike. The, the seat is extremely cushioned and the riding position is quite a bit different. It's The foot pegs are very high, and so feet are kind of like placed at a higher position which means that your uh, legs are folded more, which is what taller riders will not like now this motorcycle is three months old and it belongs to one of my subscribers so I can technically use uh, it to full power okay test out the brakes a bit wasn't really impressed because well this is the base version this is called the drum version so it's got the disc brake a 270 millimeter disc brake up front and a 130 millimeter drum brake at the rear so he's been saying that he's been using this motorcycle a lot over 8000 kilometers and he's having some problems which I discuss in the later part of the video but uh, he had to replace brake shoe which is like wh what is technically called the disc pads in just one month now I am not sure why a motorcycle this new would require disc pads replacement in just one month so just putting it out there right now the rear brake is almost non-existent it is almost non-existent so you are saying that you would need disc pad or it doesn't even have disc pads but brake pad replacement on the rear as well the display is very nice it has a service indicator it has a clock and service indicator is on right now which means it's due for a service very soon and that's going to be this motorcycle's third service in the console it's it's a classic tvs type console because i remember the console on the 204 v you see there's the red blinking light that's for the gear shift indicator so whenever you're redlining it that light comes on for you to shift up that's good then you have the main is the speedometer below which there's the fuel meter on the right there's the auto meter on the left side there's a very cleanly visible clock and below which there is this uh, service indicator and then there's this bikini small fairing i think that's basically just aesthetics and the main problem is not with the body work because that's good the main problem is with the tires because the tires 
don't really look that impressive and when motorcycles have thinner tires uh, I tend to believe that the look gets a little spoiled apart from the grip so that's always going to be an issue because the rear tire is just 110 um, that's a little bit too short of a standard on 160 cc motorcycles these days hornet has a 140 rear section tire which feels really really stable and secure and i don't understand why this motorcycle would have such thin tires and probably to save mileage you would say and the owner is saying that he's getting a mileage of 35 max that is in the city so overall might be around 42 so going into the corners the chassis doesn't inspire much confidence i know hornet was much safer to handle and feel and uh, with the thinner tires and this kind of a softer suspension setup i am not impressed at all with the handling it's too wobbly it's moving around a bit even in the smaller bumps um not really impressed with that part of the motorcycle i've generally like tvs motorcycles i really like the 204v also uh, there's a slight amount of heating now generally when i ride 160 cc or this kind of segment motorcycles i've never felt any heat so that's also a new experience so i just wanted to let you know but i'm not wearing my riding boots today usually in my review tests i do wear my riding boots acceleration is one department where i am happy because uh, combined with the thinner tires and a 16.1 bhp of power coming in at 8000 rpm this bike feels really peppy I mean, it's got good amount of throttle response and it doesn't have the delay in the throttle which a lot of commuter bikes have I believe even the X Blade had it, but I don't remember exactly. Um, but but the power feels really good, and I think that's one of the reasons why this motorcycle is offering lower mileage, is because of the higher power. But with that kind of power, the thinner tires don't really make sense to me. But probably with the thicker tire, the mileage would have dropped even further, and they wanted to avoid that. I'm not bashing TVS here, it's just what I feel because with the 16.1 bhp of power at 8000 rpm that's pretty impressive and it also has 14.8 newton meters of torque as well which is like that's impressive as well I guess that's it with smaller capacity bikes what we're dealing with is uh, usually I don't come to conclusions that fast when I'm riding a motorcycle but with smaller capacity motorcycles it's really easy to understand there's no electronics in play no ABS nothing so all you have to do is test out the acceleration which I have kilometers or even less I wouldn't come to a conclusion but with this one you know it's easy to see what are the strong points or what are the weak points. The strongest point would be the acceleration and uh, the throttle response. It's really good, really peppy, really like that. And obviously, like I've already explained that. The weaker points would be the brakes, the thinner tires. I mean, the thinner tires are absolutely unacceptable. The rear is a drum brake, so you might be thinking, is there a disc brake option available? Yes, there is. This is the base version, and he wasn't trying to save money. It was the only motorcycle option that was available at the dealership when he bought it. So, TVS usually launches their motorcycles a bit late in Kolkata, or West Bengal, as you want to say. So, it was hard for him to get the higher spec version. There is an FI version, which is a top-of-the-spec version 
and there is also a version with dual disc so if you are going for that I don't know if you want the FI version or not but at least go for the dual disc version because this drum brake is absolutely useless so go for at least the mid spec version FI is I leave, leave it up to you probably would in, improve the mileage a bit but you know it feels sporty to ride that that one thing young riders would enjoy So when I'm doing this type of a thing, usually I am super confident on most bikes. On this one, not so much. I would like to say something though. The handlebar has come off a bit loose and I know that's the steering center bolt. And that is loose and it probably should be replaced under warranty. That brings us to the fit and finish. And the fit and finish isn't that good on this bike. Um, from the outside it looks okay but the plastics well, they could do a lot of improvement it wasn't like this on uh, the R310 as far as I remember but that's a much more expensive bike um, but here the f fit and finish is really bothersome and that is something that I can easily see here also in three months there's been a lot of issues that he has faced like right now the handlebars a little bit uh, you know uh, loose and also when you're looking at it the brake shoes been replaced the front disc pad has been replaced on bad roads it's not bad because the suspension is soft so if any of you guys are thinking about that you guys are fully covered um, you know it's it's hard to be so negative but that's what honest reviews are about I would rather ask you to buy the 204 B which has been doing much better my friend owns it is doing much better this guy obviously rides his bike a lot more because it goes 8,000 kilometers in the last three and a half four months but still 8,000 kilometers is nothing it's still a relatively new motorcycle should we open this up and check out the top speed? Let's give it a try then. Well, couldn't really get to the top speed, got to about 100. I'm quite sure it does more than 100. But strong amount of engine braking I like that reminds me of my Duke you know it's easy to enjoy this bike when you're cranking open the throttle I mean most motorcycles are better to enjoy like that I shouldn't really be going this fast because this is well what is this the brakes aren't that good remember so yeah trying out the brakes full sponge effect um. The conclusion of this review isn't a favorable one. The engine is great and the motorcycle has good low and mid range. Feels more powerful on a straight line than other commuter bikes that I've ridden in recent times. But it's 2019 and on one hand the government is bringing in regulation to have ABS to increase safety and on other hand companies are making motorcycles that have really really thinner tires with these type of tires it really upsets the braking feel wet grip and ultimately safety i cannot recommend this motorcycle because it didn't really feel that good to me i know that there'll be a lot of hatred for people who like this motorcycle on this channel but i seriously don't care because you're my subscribers anybody who's looking to buy this motorcycle i would just ask you to 
take something else if you want to buy something in tvs they make an excellent 204v the apache rtr 204v which i've reviewed and i've loved so i'd rather ask you to go for that if you're a new viewer i request you to subscribe to my channel i know i don't make a lot of videos but when i do i make it with my 100 percent commitments and usually i make one or two videos every week so thanks for watching everyone please hit that bell icon i keep forgetting to tell you but if you don't hit it you won't get notifications for future videos. I hope to see you guys on the next video. We've got something big coming up. I hope plan falls in place. Goodbye.